Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 16th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Newark, New Jersey. Jesse wrote a quick diary this weekend uh, showing another example about how to find honeypot data clusters with dbscan. dbscan is a machine learning tool good at finding clusters of similar data. For honeypot data, dbscan can find clusters of similar commands distinguishing themselves with a minor detail like for example a command line argument or something like this. In particular what Jesse looked like were a uh, number of uh, similar commands that just use different passwords and password hashes and that way it was easy to for example find that all of these well commands did the same thing also he found some interesting differences than in these clusters between honeypots hosted in different cloud providers the Open Analysis Labs uh, published a research report with details about an interesting trick they have seen employed to steal credentials. The trick is not so much technical, but really more sort of a social engineering uh, trick. The technique is seen as part of the Steel C Malware's toolset. After installing the malware, it opens a Google Chrome window in kiosk mode. Kiosk mode makes it difficult to close the browser window. It's meant to essentially have a user basically use the system as a kiosk. And of course, you don't want people then just to close the window or go to a different web page. The user now is pretty much forced to enter their Google login credentials because the only page they open up is the Google login page. And then they're capturing these passwords as the user enters them. This credential may also provide access to data like passwords stored with Google and uh, other valuable data. And Open Analysis Lab calls the script opening the browser window a credential flusher. It is implemented using the automation tool Auto IT, a tool that we have often seen being used to create sort of these little malicious automations. There are also a few vulnerabilities and exploits to talk about. Ivanti last week released an update for its cloud service appliance, also known as CSA. The update uh, fixed a remote code execution vulnerability. Exploiting the vulnerability requires logging in to the appliance using any valid set of credentials, but Ivanti is already getting reports from customers that the vulnerability is being exploited following the release of a public proof of concept. Talking about Ivanti, Horizon 3 published a deep dive into another Ivanti vulnerability. This is a deserialization issue in the agent portal, which is part of Ivanti Endpoint Manager. Unlike the earlier vulnerability that I just mentioned, this one actually has a CVSS score of 9.8 due to the ease of command execution. Horizon 3 actually suggests that this vulnerability should probably consider a command injection vulnerability, not just a deserialization issue. The blog by Horizon 3 goes into some detail on how the service may be exploited. One tricky part here is that apparently it doesn't always listen on the same port. It listens uh, on sort of a more random high port, so they show how to figure out where it's listening on for your particular system. The patched version actually requires a host-based firewall to be enabled and restricts the command that can be executed to ping and trace route. FileSender, an open source application that can be used to exchange files simply and securely, patched a vulnerability that could be used to steal credentials from FileSender. So these are passwords that users set up uh, to protect uh, their files from being downloaded from unauthorized uh, users. The vulnerabilities was actually found thanks to an audit initiated by FileSender. So they went through the trouble to get a security person to do a code review and they found uh, this vulnerability. An updated version is available. The advisory notes that this issue is easiest to exploit if you use S3 as a backend for FileSender to store your files. 
Systems running with the S3 backend should be prioritized, they state, but uh, others may also be vulnerable. Then we got a new version of Docker Desktop, uh, version 4.34.2. It fixes two vulnerabilities. Both vulnerabilities are exploiting by tricking the victim into installing malicious extensions. The exploits allow remote code execution by either using a crafted extension description or change log, and the second vulnerability then a crafted publisher or additional URL. As exploitation does require installing an extension and is not something that's sort of easily initiated by an attacker, this is probably not a high priority issue, but definitely something that you probably want to address because there's yet another vulnerability that is sort of targeting developers and your supply chain. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.